Welcome back guys to another episode of Tribe of Judah. Welcome back to the channel that supplies you with faith, fun, and inspiration. Yeah, so without further ado, let's get right in. Yeah guys, so today I'm going to be talking on a very, very popular topic today, like the title. I'm going to be talking about Jesus is King and he is King indeed, but I'm not talking about Jesus is King, Jesus is King. I'm talking about Jesus is King, Kanye West, Jesus is King. Yeah, there's a lot of things that have been going on these past few days on social media and I thought I should give my two Naira to Kobo contribution to it. So um, if you haven't listened to the album, please go and listen to the album. Um, this video was inspired by Nia series. Um, a video on this same topic and I'm going to put it in the description box below and I'm just going to be contributing generally to the whole topic so I've watched um, his testimony Kanye's testimony on his um, faith and everything and before we just go into it I want to sing a quick song my brother you are welcome to the Christian family <laughs> You are welcome to the Christian family. We rejoice in heaven for you. You have come to the right fellowship. Yeah. So basically, Kanye, you, you are welcome to this higher calling, the greater calling, the higher calling. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. And with open arms, on behalf of all the Christians around the world, we say you are welcome. They have the angels in heaven are literally rejoicing over this one soul. Which takes me to the very, very first point I'll be making. Um, in one of the songs on the album, God Is, I think that's the name of the, the song, God Is. Literally, he was expressing his um, self on how after giving his life to Christ, he came to the Christian community and they were really, really held back and they really, really held back and they were not receptive to in receiving him, which makes me feel like right now what is going on with the whole judgment of, oh, is this legit or is this just another public stunt or is this one of just another Kanye moment? like this and i've seen the videos and i'm like no this this guy is legit man like the things that are coming out from kanye's mouth i'm like hey the devil is in trouble he's in soup because literally it doesn't sound like a kanye that we we are used to hearing which makes me feel like we are having the older brother syndrome now the older brother syndrome in the parable of the lost son where a man has two sons the younger one goes asks for his inheritance goes off to another land squanders it and ends up in ruins and somehow finds himself on the pig farm where he's sharing food with pigs and he realizes himself and he comes back and you know his father throws a big fist for him and his older brother who never left who was always by the father's side was not complaining that ah uh -uh, Look at this one that squandered your money and everything and look at the kind of big party you are throwing for him. Meanwhile, me that has been, you know, there all the while, nothing, nothing. And the father replies that there is greater rejoicing in heaven over one soul that has come rather than the many, many souls that are already there. Which makes me feel like we have, we, the Christian community right now is, we are having a lot of older brother syndrome. You know, if we remember where we want, where we once came from, where how far God has taken us, I don't think we would have this kind of attitude towards Kanye. I think the best thing that the best thing that Christians need to do is to actually pray for him, to encourage him in his faith, rather than tear him apart and tear him down and start questioning if he's um giving his life to christ is legit after all the bible did say that whoever confesses with his mouth and believes in his heart that jesus christ is lord is such a person is saved 
So why are we now trying to investigate and find out if his salvation is legit or not? The God's question is only God and Kanye that can answer it. In fact, it's only God that can answer it. And I believe that whoever the son of man says free is free indeed. So we don't have to put him back in that cage, you know. We have to be open and receptive. If truly we want more people to come to heaven, we can't we can't have this kind of attitude of oh Yo, are you legit at all? No, 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 no. We, we can't do that. We can't have this kind of attitude if we want, if we want to take more people to heaven with us. So, like I said, the older brother syndrome is like a serious thing. Like, Christians need to wake up and pray for him. Do you know how many people will come to Christ because of this one man? Like, think about it. Rather than seeing him down, encourage him, pray that God truly reveals himself to him. And my second point, I'm sorry guys, I had to jot this down so I don't go off point. Um, my second point is, yes, this whole controversy thing of, oh, is the salvation legit or not? Like, is God that small that you cannot reach Kanye? No. God is not too small to save anybody. Kanye is not too small, to be, it's not too big to be saved. Take for instance, Paul. You see, the Bible lays down, when the Bible, when we see stories from the Bible, these are like, you know, let's call it a blueprint of things that we actually see in real life. The Bible is the most legit and most current book in the world. Like, everything you find in the Bible, it's happening, like, right before our very before. <laughs> I don't even know if that is English. But it's happening in our faces right now. So, like, we questioning his salvation christians questioning his salvation are they trying to say that god is god is too small to reach Kanye or Kanye is too big to be saved like literally what does that one mean <laughs> not like i'm vexed or anything but well you know god's not too small to reach anybody that's why he's called the el Gibor, the mighty god the one who is mighty to save the one who is mighty to deliver the one who is mighty to redeem so kanye is not too small to be saved so let's not put let's not belittle god by questioning his salvation making it look like god can save him if god can save paul that was slaughtering christians who is kanye west Number three is the album is lit. Like it is it's on fire, man. Like every con every song, here, eleven songs on the album. Every song on the album is a hit back to back. Like <laughs> every song is lit and the content is great. No shade, but someone said, and I quote, that you know the al the content on the album is more Christian than is more Christian than the content on some quote and unquote Christian rappers or some Christian rappers their album. Like you can see how much he has put into this album, how much he's expressing himself. In fact, there there's some words in and like some lyrics rather in, in some of the songs. I'm like whoa. Anyways, my favorite song on the album is every, I think every church or every Sunday, the one that has a hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wait, my voice is very cracked, so I can't wait to save my life right now. But well, the, the content is great. Like, if you listen to it, I think most transi um, transitional believers will find that content great. They will be able to relate to that content. I think that's what the whole album is all about. It's a transformational con Like, it has, it carries so much transformational content. You know, where I was and where I am now. In fact, there was a song where he was talking about how like call it useless his grammys and his awards and how he just laid it at the feet of god i'm like jesus this is too much this is too much this is too much sauce man like wow i'm like whoo this album alone you know if i was me i'm like check, salvation check he is saved <laughs> you know and the last but not the least is pray listen and be blessed like if you're if you're skeptical about listening to the album or listening to the um, songs on the album, I think you should pray about it and you should... Excuse me. 
I think you should pray about it and you should listen and best like if the Holy Spirit is telling you okay this this content is not for you then fine no problem don't listen to it but if you have that go ahead to listen to it fine listen to it in fact one of the reasons why I really wanted to listen to the song was because everybody was like oh Jesus is king Jesus is king Jesus is king and I'm like ha if I'm not inside this string <laughs> then no, uh, I have to catch on this goodness and to be honest I really 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 did enjoy it I enjoyed every single song I sent the songs to my friend after downloading it I sent it to a lot of my friends and I'm yet to get their feedback though but it was for me it was really really good so when lastly to cap it all off I would say pray for Kanye West like Nia Seri said I, I would say pray for him like there's so much going on. I saw somewhere, I think on, on E! News, on Instagram, that there's so much controversy within the family. Now he has asked his daughter to stop wearing makeup and stop wearing crop tops. And I'm like, is this Kanye? Like, really? Is this a Kanye we know? <laughs> but I'm like, wow, this is a lot. It's, it's going to be, this is going to be a really, really hard time for him and his family. You know, one thing about coming publicly to declare jesus is that it comes with a lot of you know it comes with a lot of hardship it comes with a lot of difficulties you know it's not it's not an easy journey at all and rather than you know question the legitimacy of his salvation why not pray for him even if his salvation is fake safe pray that through this thing that he has or she is the one that uses his mouth to say that um he's now a christian and stuff like that like Pray that God actually reveals himself to Kanye, like full blown, the Paul kind of revelation. Like Paul literally saw Jesus, like literally, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't have that, but he, he saw, he had an encounter that changed his life. That is the kind of prayer we should pray. We should also pray for his family. I know some people, because I know I have a lot of Nigerians on this channel. I know some Nigerians are like, ah, I have not finished praying for my own family. I'm not going to pray for Kanye West. No, 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 we shouldn't do that. We should pray for one another. One thing I noticed about praying for other people is that you get this, this deep sense of satisfaction. In fact, I, I enjoy it because I feel fulfilled in the moment. Like, not only for the moment, but when you look back at the moment, you just, has, you just have this sense of satisfaction that you have done something good. So, I think we should pray for him, pray for his family, that this will not tear them apart, and that God will reveal himself fully to to him and if you're still s skeptical about the whole issue i feel you shouldn't judge shouldn't be be hasty and making your judgments but you should just you know allow the holy spirit to walk through trust me this is this is this is a revolutionary moment in in christianity like i'm seeing so many mainstream artists becoming coming out to declare their public faith in God in Jesus and it's really crazy because these people have a lot of followership you know in, in the world they have a lot of followers they have a lot of fans and for them to come out and do things like this man it means that we are heaven is going to be full of surprises it means that heaven is going to be jam-packed to a lot of people a lot of people can get saved through this platform so rather than tear this down pray that god will use whatever this situation is with kanye to bring people to his kingdom the bible says that the laborers are few and the harvest is much like there's a massive there's a massive field there are people to bring to the kingdom of god but the people that are actually doing this in a are very few and if one man like i can imagine the number of people Kanye West can bring into the kingdom through this this whole situation so rather than tear him down rather than you know criticize and question the legitimacy of his salvation pray for him and pray that you know God will do let God's will be done God's will above any man's will God's will above any man's agenda and lastly I'd like to wrap up by saying that you know in this generation there's a move of God the Bible says that eyes have not seen neither have ears heard you know what God has in store for his children you know God is moving in diverse ways and trust me you don't want to be stuck in the old way you don't want to be stuck in the former movement of god like you have to be on the new new like you have to be on the new things that god is doing you can't afford to be stuck in the in the past you know god used to god used to what is god doing now what is god saying per time that is what we're supposed to be catching on 
you know, there's a train that is moving very fast. Like that is the move of God. Like the train of the move of God is moving really quickly. And trust me, you want to be on that train. I want to be on that train. And we're all going to be on that train together. So I hope this video has been able to encourage someone to, someone to pray, to pray for the harvest, to pray that a lot of people come to heaven. And I hope you have fun. And do have a blessed week. See you next time. Bye-bye.